on today's Maker Mashup, part one of our DIY laser series. Today we're going to be working on building our own laser cutter. And this is a Core XY laser cutter that we're going to be building. And for those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you can see that this looks remarkably like an X301. Now, if you're not familiar with the X301, it's a DIY Core XY 3D printer series that we've done on this channel. And there's a card up at the top so you can check that out. So for a while now, I've wanted to put together a laser cutter. I ultimately am going to want to get a CO2 laser. I've used CO2 lasers in the past and they work extremely well, but they're cost prohibitive and it's something that takes up more space in the shop. And I wanted something that I could just do some basic light engraving with. So when I originally started off with this project, I thought I would create a brand new motion system, probably a Cartesian system, and use that as the basis for building a laser cutter. So as I thought about that for a little bit, I said to myself, why couldn't I use the same motion system that we use on the X301? So I started going down that path, and after a couple of iterations, came up with this. And what we've got here is essentially the X301 with the primary difference of there being four sets of feet or these corner brackets that you would install in the back of the 301. I've installed on all four corners and created some new stepper mounts that allow you to use these basically as feet. Now the feet work great because what I did is I just applied some TPU to the bottom of this, created TPU feet, and this stays in place really, really well. And the other benefit of reusing this motion system was that I could really focus on what I wanted, which was building the laser part of this project and not have to worry about how to create the entire motion system and how I would set that up. I think it's definitely in my wheelhouse to be able to create that, but I wanted to really start working on this project right away, and this was just a natural evolution. So what I've got here is a motion control system, and it is really on an open frame, so we can make this into anything. We're going to be doing this as a laser cutter to start, but then what I'm also going to do is make different heads, so that way I can go ahead and attach a vinyl cutter or a plotter. So essentially, by building this project, you'll get three other projects out of it all at the same time. So in today's video, part one, we're going to be assembling the frame. Now, along with the frame, we're also going to do the linear rails on here. We'll install the steppers and the belts and basically put together everything that you see here. This will get us ready for our next video, which will focus on the electronics. Now, I used Marlin for the firmware in the electronics, which means that if you're familiar with compiling Marlin and using it, this will be a very simple project for you to do, and it's something that you can get done in a weekend. So with all that said, let's get to work. We start this project by working with the four corners and the feet. We're going to go ahead and install screws and we're also going to need ourselves a calibration cube. It's just a 20 by 20 cube that fits in here and fills the space. We have our M5 screws and T-nuts. We'll just push the extrusion up to the end and then we're going to want to loosely tighten this. Don't over tighten it because when we get to the last one here, you'll see that we'll need it a little bit loose to go ahead and not break the plastic extruded parts that are here at the corners. Once that's in place, give it a good tighten and then we're done with the base frame. Now we move on to the pulley towers. We'll insert an M5 nut in here and I like to use a screw because it's a little bit easier to get that nut inside there. Once it's pressed into place, you can just remove the screw afterwards and leave the nut inside. Now we need our M5 40 millimeter screw and this will take a little bit of finesse. Slowly do each pulley and washer, moving the screw up ever so slightly until we get the full stack built here. We'll have the two pulleys with one washer in between and then that will go ahead and attach to the nut that we already placed in our previous step. Be sure not to over tighten this as the pulleys need to spin freely. 
Finally, we'll insert our M5 screws and attach this to the base of the frame. To do this, we'll insert our M5 nut into the hole here. We'll flip everything over and then from there, we will install the pulley tower that we just created in the last step. We'll do this on each side of our frame. Now we're gonna need six M5 screws and nuts and this will install our steppers to the front of the frame. We tighten these the same way we did the rear pulley towers and once it's in place, the main frame is done. Now let's continue with the installation of our motion system. We start by installing these 12 millimeter wide linear rails and we do that with M3 screws and I use every other hole. It's probably a little overkill, but it adds rigidity overall to the design. With one rail in, we'll install the other one on the opposite side. Now we move on to the linear rail that will hold our carriage. We'll start by inserting some M5 nuts into these recesses using the same method we used before. Once we have the nuts in on both of these parts, then we'll insert the linear rail and prepare to put it on top of our frame. You may need to adjust how deep the rail goes into the slot, but once you do, these will fit then right on top of the other set of linear rails, making this portion of our carriage complete. We use some M3 screws to attach this to the top of the linear rail. The horizontal rail is secured with M3 screws and nuts. The pulley tower is a bit of a balancing act. You'll place the 3D printed part followed by the tooth pulley, then the smooth pulley, and then the other 3D printed part. And all of this is secured with two M5 screws. Be sure not to over tighten this as the pulleys need to spin freely. Now we install the steppers into the stepper mounts. I used 0.9 degree steppers because I wanted to have a really high level of granularity for the laser. And this is installed with these M3 screws and washers. No need to tighten these now. We just want to put this in place and save the rest for the belt. Now we're going to take our four TPU feet and we're going to put this on all four corners. This will keep our frame from slipping around. I found some green cable wrap online that allows me to match the style of the build and hide these wires nice and neat. Once we install the stepper drive pulleys on each side, our build is ready for us to route our belts. We start with the carriage block and this process begins by dropping some M3 nuts into the carriage assembly and then we're going to drop some M3 screws into the carriage plate that holds the belt. We're going to attach this on both sides and leave them nice and loose. Then we'll attach this to the carriage itself and we'll begin routing our belts. To route the belt, you'll start on the left side of the carriage. Insert the belt and then you'll take the belt and move it all the way around following the pulleys where the tooth part of the belt meets up with the tooth part of the pulley. Once you make it around to the other side, you're going to take the smooth part of the belt and that will insert into the pulley stack here and come out the other side, which attaches over to the carriage. Don't forget to hook up the stepper in the front. That tooth portion of the belt meets up with the stepper. Once you've wrapped it around both sides, then we can begin to tighten things onto the carriage. When you cut it, make sure you leave ample space so that way you can adjust the belt if necessary. Once we've made sure everything's square, we'll use the steppers to tighten the belt and we'll secure it down with these M3 screws. Finally, we'll make an adjustment here with the stepper pulley to make sure that the belt itself is not hitting any of the plastic parts. It should only be riding on the pulleys themselves. Once that's done, secure this by tightening the grub screws and we're complete with our build. So as you can see, putting this together was really rather simple. I think the most work out of all of this was just simply printing the parts. Uh, it did take a little bit of time to get all these parts done, but assembly was really, really quick. Uh, and then the other part that I think is really important to note is make sure when you do this project that you get your frame square and you're also making sure that when you attach the belt, 
they have an equal length and that is square. The easiest way to tell that is to move this all the way back and make sure that you don't have gaps between these uh, left and right sides of the pulley towers. If there's no gap there, or even if there is a gap, moving and adjusting this one tooth at a time on one belt usually will solve that problem. And then you'll make sure that your whole frame is square. Now, if you're watching this video and you haven't assembled an X301, that's a very helpful tip for an X301 uh, build as well, because you need to make sure that this is square. Otherwise things won't print properly, or in this case, cut properly. In our next video, we're gonna be covering the electronics and getting that all set up. We're gonna use Marlin for the firmware. All the electronics are commodity electronics. I used an old SKR version 1.3. You could use a Melzi board for it. So it really doesn't matter as long as it can run Marlin 2.0. You can use the same firmware. and I'll have that in a repo. So you can download that as well and get all the configurations for this, just like we have for the X301. Now, the other key thing to remember in building this is laser safety. And we'll cover that when we do the electronics. It's really critical that if you're gonna be building a laser cutter, you take extra precautions because you only have two eyes and I really want you to keep watching my videos. So it's better if you have both eyes able to do that. So with that, it's going to bring the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss the moment that we release the next video in this series. Now, if you enjoyed this and like working on these types of projects, I suggest you check out our Discord channel. It is an online makerspace where myself and many other makers hang out and we discuss projects like this. And if you'd like to get early access, consider becoming a patron. All of the patrons get early access to these sort of projects before they're released to everyone else. So with that, I want to say thanks again for watching and we'll see you all next time.